So maybe a cardboard box or a mint tin isn't exactly what you wanted for an enclosure. It might be too small, too big, and you want something a little more custom. And with the proliferation of maker spaces and hacker spaces out there, many people have access to laser cutters. And I wanna show a couple of quick tips and tricks about making your own laser cut Arduino prototyping enclosure. We'll start with a couple of websites that are great resources. And the first one here, it's probably the first one that I ever came across, was called Box Designer. And it's really straightforward. You basically put your dimensions in, say you wanted a five inch by three inch by one inch box. There's advanced options for notches and cut widths and you click design it. And you're left with a PDF file of your box and it has these nice little notches to key everything together. Very similar to some of the notches you might see on some even commercial products. This happens to be the useless machine kit. And this has some of the notches, but it also has T slots. And we're gonna look at that in a minute. Thought I should at least quick demo that. And they're really useful, especially when cutting acrylic, not so much with cardboard, but it also can be found on something like this. I've got the old MakerBot out here, one of the original ones. And you can see there's lots of T slotting on this one. It's a little bit different than, than is presented on the website but it does make a viable enclosure. The next one I wanna look at is Make a Box. Make a Box is pretty similar in that you can put in your dimensions again, five by three by one. You have a material thickness, so let's just say it was an eighth of an inch and we wanna do eighth inch tabs. And then you have kerfs and margins and padding Read all the descriptions there. Basically that allows you to compensate for the thickness of a laser beam, but you could also compensate for the size bit in a router if you say have a CNC router. And don't forget, no laser cutter, no router. Don't worry about it. You can actually cut these by hand. I wouldn't necessarily want to, but you could. A little donation there. And realistically, if you're using this to make some boxes, you should totally donate. And basically you have uh, a download link for that PDF as well. Now, the last one I wanna show you is called MakerCase, and it's makercase.com, and this one actually is my favorite, mainly because of this graphical user interface here, and it has this great preview right here. So if I were to do, again, box, we're doing five, oh, not 45, five by three by one, you get this really cool preview here. And then what I really like about this is, again, let's do eighth inch, pretend this is eighth inch wood. You can do finger joints and it gives you the preview of what they would look like. And you can do T-slot and T-slot's pretty cool. T-slot can be found right here on this box. You can see right here, you use a screw and a nut and it puts these neat little T's in here and allows you to screw the box together to create some pretty robust structures. And in this case, it's putting them on all the corners here and all of right here on the sides and bottoms. You don't have a total control here, but I've actually used this one on several different projects and it works really, really well. You also can put in your screw diameter, screw length, laser cutter plans, and it kind of nests them together really well. And you can have vector engraving and text and the kerf and, you know, you just download the plans. Maker case is my go-to for designing cases to be cut on a laser cutter, whether it's cardboard, wood, plastic, whatever it is. It has lots of functions and has a great preview. So no matter what you use, remember, creating a case is not that difficult. You could easily make 10 of these for a short run of production work. And in fact, some of these, like this kit right here, is a production piece and it uses the same technique.